So with all the stuff that's been going on recently, I thought it would be a really good time to talk about what it's like to be on campus during a school shooting. Before I transferred to Pepperdine, I was attending Santa Monica College from 2012 to 2014. And this happened on June 7th, 2013. So I was in my second semester at SMC and I was 19 years old. It happened on one of the last days of finals week. So there were a lot of people on campus, whether they were sitting at the library or in the classrooms or walking to their tests. I had a philosophy final that day. So I was studying in the library and I decided to go to class a little bit early so I could stay in the classroom and get set up and everything. So I walked to class. I was over in the HSS building, which is right next to the library. So maybe 20 minutes later, my professor arrived and he was getting ready to pass out all the test booklets and we were getting our pencils and everything. We we're just getting ready to take this test that we knew we probably weren't gonna do too well on. As he was passing out the booklets, one of my classmates ran in the classroom. He was out of breath and he said to us, guys, there's someone with a gun outside. He's outside the library. He's dressed in all black and he's shooting at people. When this happened, we all looked at each other and we started panicking because we were terrified. You could tell none of us were prepared for this to happen and my teacher was just flailing his arms about trying to figure out what to do with all of us. A few seconds after he said this, we started to hear gunshots, maybe like three or four, and it was crazy because I had never actually heard a gunshot before that day, so I didn't really know what they sounded like, but it sort of sounded like a quick pop that echoed throughout the quad. Not really loud, but definitely loud enough for us to hear it. In our classroom, one wall was almost entirely windows and they're all open so we could hear things really clearly happening near the library and in the quad. So after hearing those gunshots, we all ran to the corner of the classroom and started huddling together because we didn't want to be near any windows where a bullet could come through and like hit one of us. My professor was also huddling with us because we didn't really know what exactly to do in this moment. We couldn't lock the door and we didn't really know how to handle the situation that we were in. Eventually the gunshots did stop. So we all pulled out our phones and we started to look on the news and on social media to figure out exactly what was happening. People were posting Facebook statuses that there was four active shooters on campus to go nowhere near campus and to just go on lockdown. So we didn't really know what to think of the situation. Like, did someone plan this? Is it a group of people? Is it terrorists? We don't know. We wound up being on lockdown for about four or five hours. During that time, my professor was just trying to calm us down by helping us study for the final, just to distract us from this because we were all so scared. We didn't really know what was happening and we didn't know if our door could even lock. No, no one even wanted to get up and check because we were too scared to leave that corner at that point. I was even scared to call my mom and tell her what was going on because I was so afraid that she would try to come to campus and get me and they wanted everyone to stay away from campus at this point because we were on full lockdown. So after four or five hours, we finally heard a knock at the door and we were quite scared because we didn't know exactly who it was, but then they said it was a SWAT team. So we answered the door and they said they were gonna escort us out. So we all put our hands up in the air and we made a single file line and left the classroom. After we were escorted out on Topeka Boulevard, it honestly looked like a scene from Grand Theft Auto. There was like 10 helicopters above us, police cars everywhere, news outlets, there was Fox, there was ABC, there was reporters swarming us, trying to get a story from us. It was crazy. I was interviewed by Fox News, which I will insert here. There's a guy with a gun outside and we thought it was a joke because of what happened a few weeks ago, but then we heard gunshots outside and we could hear the vibrations echoing because it was coming from the library or somewhere in the middle of the school. And your teacher starts, gets her cell phone, his, yeah, her he his cell phone and he's like, okay, I'm gonna call police guys. And we were really scared because the door couldn't be locked. So we don't have a key to it. So we, the shooter could just come in and kill us all. So we all ran to the corner of the classroom where there was no windows or doors and we got on the floor and we were just panicking and it was just really overwhelming. Really overwhelming, she says, and she thought her biggest worry, biggest fear of the day was studying for her big final exam that she was going to take at the college. Not to be two quick points from what that student said. They tried to lock themselves in the classroom. No locks. The doors had no locks on them. The other point, interesting as far as investigators are concerned, a couple of weeks ago they had a similar scare, if you will, a scare on the campus of Santa Monica College, something maybe to do with a bomb threat. So they scrambled and the students kind of scrambled, but they realized it was a false alarm. Many tonight questioning, was that related possibly to this gun? 
gunman and the tragic events of today? Don't know at this hour, but oh, you bet, investigators are looking at any possibilities and any clues and any leads this very hour. Now, back the shooter had actually tried to buy a weapon back in 2011, but he was denied it. Now, I don't necessarily think that we should get rid of guns completely, but I definitely hope that when gun reform inevitably happens, that they put laws on the parts that you can obtain to actually build a gun. Because this could be a loophole for how people who don't pass the background check could build a weapon of their own that could be even worse. Like the shooter literally went online and bought different parts that were legal and built an illegal weapon. Anyway, thanks for listening guys. I hope this gave you more insight into what it's like to experience something like this.